the ruthless bombing of civilians during the past few years, which has resulted in the maiming and in the death of thousands of defenseless men, women, and children, has profoundly shocked the conscience of humanity. President Franklin Delano Roosevelt's words on September 1st, 1939. Any military commander bears great responsibility, and their actions can determine history, especially those who control an entire army. Many times, the world's leaders have faced controversial conflicts and have had to compromise on the issue. In America's case, one of the most noteworthy circumstances was President Truman's involvement in the ending of World War II. Simultaneously, numerous scientists in Germany and the United States began to see that nuclear fission was theoretically possible and could be achieved by splitting an atom in order to release tremendous amounts of energy. On December 13, 1939, nuclear fission was achieved at Germany's Wilhelm Institute for Chemistry, and the possibility of an atomic bomb, one that would bring untold destruction, was born. With the power Adolf Hitler already had over Germany, some worried that if he managed to develop an atomic bomb, he'd soon be invincible, and none would have the firepower to counter his attack. Albert Einstein, fleeing from the Nazis and very concerned about the whole affair, sent a letter to President Roosevelt. Upon receiving the letter and the warning it contained, the President immediately took action. Surreptitiously, a group of scientists was gathered to research and build an atomic bomb, an initiative known to a few trusted people as the Manhattan Project. Eventually, this project would cost over $2 billion, which is over $29 billion today. On December 7, 1941, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor in an unprovoked attack, forcing the U.S. to enter the war, letting go of their isolationist policies and ending the Great Depression. World War II was a massacre, with soldiers dying in droves and atrocities being committed by all sides. For example, the Battle of Okinawa, Japan, comprised over 200,000 casualties, more than 100,000 of them civilians. During this battle, President Roosevelt died in Georgia, and Vice President Harry S. Truman took over, an unexpected change in leadership which would greatly affect the outcome of the war. Unaware of the bomb till his presidency, Truman seized upon it as a possible solution to the mounting death toll of the war. None knew if the bomb would work once it was built, so on July 16, 1945, the bomb was successfully tested in Alamogordo, New Mexico, an experiment known as the Trinity Test. Consequently, Truman decided to deploy the bomb. However, Leo Sislard, one of the scientists, and some of his colleagues began to have doubts about the ethics of dropping the super bomb on Japan without any warning. The result of this reluctance was the Oak Ridge petition sent to Truman. He compromised with the scientists and agreed to give the Japanese a chance to surrender. Later in July, when President Truman met with Winston Churchill, the Prime Minister of England, and Joseph Stalin, the Premier of the Soviet Union, for the Potsdam Conference in Germany, this promise was kept. The Potsdam Declaration called for complete and unconditional surrender from all of Japan, but they refused. There can be no peace in the world until the military power of Japan is destroyed. Germany had surrendered after Hitler's suicide. Italy had been long gone, and the only Axis power left was Japan. She was a brutal and fierce fighter. In fact, even the civilians were trained to attack American soldiers. An invasion would be costly, perhaps as many casualties as three Okinawas. Political benefits were also taken into consideration. The Soviet Union, a communist country, would demand joint occupation of Japan in return for assistance. This was an unattractive option to Truman who, as the leader of America, believed in stopping the spread of communism. Also, both were currently battling for supremacy through nuclear means, and these tensions would eventually escalate into the Cold War. As Herbert Fry, an author and consultant to several secretaries of war, said in 1961, Churchill and Truman and some of their colleagues conceived that besides bringing the war to a quick end, it would improve the chances of arranging a satisfactory peace. But would not the same dramatic proof of Western power that shocked Japan into surrender impress the Russians also? Furthermore, the billions of dollars spent on bomb research couldn't be wasted. The atomic bombs created for use in Germany were no longer needed, so this massive weapon could, supposedly, be used to end the war earlier, plus save millions of lives. Contrary to this, a profuse number of the Japanese population suffered from nuclear radiation when those fatal days arrived. I've never seen anything of that. 
that awful. It was 8 a.m. on August 6, 1945, in the city of Hiroshima, Japan. On that clear summer day near the Oda River, children played outside while men and women went to work. A single plane flew overhead and the civilians took little notice of it, thinking that it was the expected American weather plane. Only a few saw the black speck that fell from it. Forty-five seconds later, a bright flash of light was seen, accompanied by a tremendous booming sound that could only be heard miles away from the center. The temperature rose to 7,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and the sky darkened as clouds of moon covered the site of Hiroshima for the first time. Shocked people came to consciousness, only to find themselves covered in blood, with skin peeling off and injuries that were beginning to swell. Far above the city, in a B-29 Super Fortress plane, nicknamed the Enola Gay, the pilots watched as the cloud cleared. For Colonel Paul Tibbet, one of the pilots, the moments had seared themselves into his memory forever. A bright light filled the plane. The city was hidden by that awful cloud, boiling up, mushrooming. For a moment, no one spoke. My co-pilot said he could taste the atomic vision. I turned away to write in my journal, asking myself, my God, what have we done? Three days later, a second atomic bomb, Fat Man, was dropped on Nagasaki. The damage there was spread over a greater radius, but no firestorm was involved. Those two attacks combined caused more than 140,000 casualties, and radiation-related diseases afflicted the Japanese people for years after. It was only two days later that Japan would surrender, effectively ending World War II. The reasons for such drastic steps have been debated ever since. When we ended the war, that's what it did. So I guess it was a good thing. It was a good thing for me because uh, it saved me from having to go to the war. However, many today suspect President Truman to have had ulterior motives, to have dropped the bomb simply to gain diplomatic advantage and impress the Russians. Others believe that the President's statement after the bombing acknowledged the true reasons. The world will note that the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, a military base. We won the race of discovery against the Germans. We have used it in order to shorten the agony of war, in order to save the lives of thousands and thousands of young Americans. Even after both sides argued for their reasons, there are still many questions left unanswered. It's possible that the President and James Burns, one of Truman's closest advisors, believed that they were simply carrying out traditional policies and got so carried away with their desire to end the war that they didn't stop to think. Truman's responsibility as a military commander and leader of an influential country conflicted with his moral and ethical values when he was burdened with the duty of ending World War II. This conflict was resolved when he compromised by deciding to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, relieving the tension of a political situation between Russia and the U.S., as well as ending the war and providing a use for the billions of dollars spent on bomb research. President Truman believed that his personal compromise was effective, not fully realizing the long-term effects which shaped the world for generations to come. And that's why there's such a big concern today about the use of nuclear weapons, because people just don't understand the damage that, you know, it's not just lives lost, but it's in the environment destroyed, landscape destroyed, everything. It's, it's, so it's a very... Uh, important subject that we tend to, that we don't ever get into a nuclear conflict. Today, Hiroshima and Nagasaki serve as symbols of the destruction of nuclear weapons, a memorial to those who died in the first and only instance of nuclear warfare. Some of the remnants of the buildings that are in Hiroshima are still there today as symbols of what happened. And there's a, a big mound in this area in Hiroshima that contains ashes of the people that were killed in that bombing. In 1961, the United Nations banned nuclear warfare, hoping that a World War III would never occur and that none would ever be forced to compromise in such a way.